Our climate has changed, and it's going to keep on changing. We have a good idea of what to expect globally, but not all places are affected in the same way. This is especially true for climate change hotspots, areas that experience climate change more intensely than other places. For the hundreds of millions of people living in the semi-arid hotspot regions of Africa and Asia, life is already challenging. Their climates are harsh and hard to predict. Things are likely to get worse, making the problems we face much harder to overcome. But it's these same areas that could teach us how to adapt. For thousands of years, local people have maintained a balance with nature that's allowed them to survive in difficult conditions. That's why a group of leading research and development organizations have formed ASAR. We've been studying how the climate has already changed and is expected to change in these hotspots. We want to better understand the impacts of climate change and pinpoint effective ways to adapt so that people living in these areas are better prepared for a changing world. This video has been made to share with you the most recent research that we have, so that together we can plan for the future. In India, we are working in the Bangalore, Moya Bhavani and Sangamna semi-arid sub-regions in a mix of urban, rural and forest areas. In two of these regions, the temperature has been steadily increasing over the past 60 years at a faster rate than the rest of the Indian subcontinent. Semi-arid areas in India have also experienced extreme rain and heat waves in recent decades. These heat waves can last as long as 12 to 16 days and caused over 2,000 deaths this year. By 2050, average temperatures across central and northern parts of India are expected to increase by at least 2 degrees, which is likely to have a big impact on rural production, including livestock and agriculture. It's harder to predict how rainfall will change, but there are some persistent trends that we can base our adaptation strategies on. There's been a significant decrease in rainfall in some regions, and the monsoon has become more erratic. Extreme rainfall events are expected to increase, and some semi-arid regions and urban areas are identified as highly vulnerable. A lot of rural areas will be affected by these changes, but rapid and unplanned urban expansion is projected to compound the impact of extreme events for the increasing urban population as well. The semi-arid regions of southern Africa have highly variable rainfall, which leads to frequent droughts and flash floods. These areas are culturally and ecologically diverse, but have high levels of poverty, high levels of unemployment and inequality, and high levels of HIV and AIDS. Because of the relatively low agricultural productivity, people living in these areas rely on a variety of natural resources, employment and remittances to survive. Average temperatures here have increased by 30% more than the rest of southern Africa, confirming these semi-arid regions are climate change hotspots. The average temperatures in these regions are projected to rise by 35 to 40 percent more than the rest of southern Africa over the next 40 years, meaning the impacts caused by heat will be felt here first. Rainfall in southern Africa has shown considerable variation over the last 50 years, and from one year to the next, rainfall can change dramatically. There's also been a pattern of drier and wetter decades, and in the semi-arid regions, these patterns have been more extreme. However, there isn't strong evidence yet about how rainfall patterns might change. A lot of the same problems are likely to continue with warming, adding to the stress and causing reduced water availability, increased risk of disease reduced crop and livestock productivity, and damage to infrastructure and buildings. Their poverty, unemployment, low levels of education, population growth, and health problems already experienced here make these regions particularly vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. The Wabopo Sikasso transect in West Africa experiences strong variations in climate from decade to decade. The region also has a high exposure to dry spells, and over time, there has been significant land degradation which can lead to desertification. The average temperatures have been rising, 
With the highest increases in the Sahara Desert, and instances of extreme heat will also increase. The trends are higher for the semi-arid regions than for the rest of West Africa, showing us that they are a climate change hotspot. Since 1960, there has been a decrease in average rainfall per decade in almost all the months and seasons. This means that the wetter decades have not been as wet and the drier decades have been drier. Climate models project large increases in wet extremes in the future and there is evidence of the rainy season shifting later in the year for some regions. High levels of poverty, lack of social support, climate-dependent livelihoods, and gender inequalities mean that these areas are particularly vulnerable to the flooding and heavy rainfall events which are causing increasing damage in the region. Changes in land use caused by population growth, such as degradation of forests and rangelands, also have a strong and increasing influence on the vulnerability of these areas to drought. Herder farmer conflict in West Africa has increased as northern pastoralists have extended further southward into regions dominated by crop agriculture, while at the same time, farmers have expanded crop production into lands used primarily by pastoralists. The semi-arid regions of East Africa are among the most food insecure regions in the world, and many people rely on the rains for crop production and livestock. Communal conflict and the resulting population displacement has already challenged regional security and peace, but climate change is bringing a new dimension to East Africa's vulnerability, partly because of the low economic and institutional capacity to deal with its impacts. The semi-arid regions have been warming by an average of 0.16 degrees Celsius a decade for the last 50 years. This trend is set to continue the number of very hot days are set to almost double and the average temperature could increase by up to 4 degrees Celsius in some regions by 2050. Projections for rainfall are much more uncertain and much more research needs to be done. What we do know is that there are likely to be large increases in wet extremes in the future. Drought and flood hazards, widespread poverty, human diseases and high population growth rates are expected to intensify the demand for food, water and livestock forage in East Africa and different groups and societies will experience these risks in different ways. Women, disabled people, the elderly and children, as well as the rural and urban poor are especially vulnerable to the impacts of climate change and these groups often have limited access to the resources needed for adaptation. In the course of the ASAR project, we are going to deepen understanding of what impacts these changes will cause and what challenges this will bring for different groups, like pastoralists, women, youth and the elderly, and those living in urban and rural areas. But ASAR's aim is to go further than that. We want to understand how to face these challenges, what factors make a real difference in being able to effectively adapt to these impacts, and how to improve people's well-being. Ultimately, we want to see a shift from adaptation that happens in a piece-by-piece, short-term way to adaptation that brings widespread, long-term changes that will help better protect people and environments. We'll be working with decision-makers, practitioners and communities so that ASA research brings direct benefit in shaping and informing how the most vulnerable can adapt to the challenges ahead. Our climate is changing. It's time that we do too.